Um, Chanchai, I do honestly feel like stage awareness in VF is so late and often the last thing for a beginner to think about because just keeping the stand-up game in their head is hard enough as it is. I would not begrudge improving players getting wrung out a bunch, but what I would say is um, that... Uh, Let's see, how much should I put this? There gets to be a certain... Like, a chance I... Think about Kage on Aoi's stage. <laughs> and how, basically, if you're not right in the middle of the stage, uh, the launcher is a ring out. Now, that's, that's the extreme example of how good ring outs can be, right? But what players have to do, and it it's really hard to put mental e to put like direct effort into this, is to think, based on where I am, if Leon gets this kick, I get rung out. And then using that to make a decision. Like it's already hard enough to anticipate your opponent's movements and make a decision. That's kinda high level already. You know what I mean? Like there. I remember playing Adam Yuki, there would be times where I'd be like, I think he's gonna 2k, I'm gonna position myself based on thinking he'll 2k. And I was wrong a lot, but sometimes I was right. The point is, it's a hard read, that which is not gonna pay off well if you're wrong. And that's how they feel about ring out awareness. It's, I should just hold G, or I should just, you know, fuzzy forward, because I cannot reliably predict my opponent. So how can I possibly be right when I say that I think he'll use this move to start a ring out combo? They feel very similarly about that. So you don't necessarily have to go easy on people, Chan Chai, but your style of play, especially if your opponent isn't character aware and knows a lot about what Leon is doing, is making it so that they're focusing on everything else and that's the last thing on their mind. <laughs> and there's pro and honestly, there's tons of other specific situations in VF that are very similar to that, in the sense where a lower level player is not going to have the confidence to make that read. Twenty seven so I have to embrace ring outs and ring position. Yeah, like understanding like if I get this hit I can get the ring out. If I get this hit, I can get the wall hit and so on. That that was one of the things I was working on. Um it's harder. <laughs> but yeah. Um you uh, how you wanna phrase that is say that your combos are good, but your combo variation is not perfect. Because what is ring? What is ring? What is a ring out? It's effectively the right combo, and if their back is to the wall, it's simply the right coin flip. Um, like if your back is to the wall and I am Pi, and I anticipate you'll step this way, and I hit four kg, that's the round. Like, and so they want to think of it as a win button, right? If this is the position and you read X and you do Y, you win, and get them to think about the reads in those terms. So it's both combo variation and specific reads at the wall. Because what, what happens when you're defending at the wall? You start thinking, I gotta get away from the wall. And what good players are thinking is, you're either gonna step, and I'm gonna counter hit you with one of my good circulars and get exactly the combo I want or the ring out, or you're not gonna step, and I need to guess your high or your low guard. That's what's actually happening, right? Um, so we have to get that mindset into the other players so they know how to make the reverse read. What's the best way to do running jab? Um, well, if you're if you're running, you can just press P. Like if you have, it, it sort of depends. I mean, run up jab is like not super good. Like if you run a long distance and you just hold forward and press jab, that'll be a jab. That won't be six P. But if you want to like dash up and hit a jab, then you need to hit six six G P. Yeah, you have to hit G so that you don't accidentally get like six six P.
you need the G.